Hello everyone, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about rendering. So we've got our owl um, and it is looking kind of fierce and kind of cute at the same time, which I'm enjoying. Uh, so this episode we'll be talking about rendering using Rhino's rendering engine. So uh, the way we're gonna do that is we are going to break our owl into individual layers. Basically every layer of the owl we want to have a uh, different material on. So basically we'll kind of do like the eye will be a layer on both sides, the inner eye here, the outer eye, the eyebrows, all of that. So the way we do that is we break our owl into separate pieces. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the owl and I'll pull up my layers tab over here and I will explode the owl. So you can either type explode or under our standard uh, panel here, it should have the explode. Right there and that breaks it all into pieces and I start off with the biggest pieces that I want to do um, which are, will be this portion right here and I'm going to call it owl body so I'm going to click over here on layer two slowly so that it changes and I can type in owl body enter and then click here and right click and change object layers. And I believe if you have a Mac, it might say um, uh, something else to change the object layer, but it, it'll be in the same spot. So change object layer and boom. And then if I put it back in shaded here, you'll see now it's purple and that helps us to kind of see it. And usually with the layers that I'm dealing with, I like to turn them off at that time. And I don't like the grid being where it is. So I'm gonna change that C plane. So I'll go up to C planes here and go to world top and that just Put, changes our grid real quick. So you might not have that issue. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this and I'm actually gonna turn this layer off. So all of the objects that I put on that layer will go to a, uh, uh, will be off. So for example, I want to do this little ridge here. So, and I can, as I'm going here, actually join these all back together again um, that are gonna be on the same layer or I can wait and do that at the end, but And you don't want to miss anything. But that's why we turn it off so that anything that's sitting around, you go, oh, that's supposed to be on that layer. And then I'll join it first. It joins right here or type the word join and then right click, change object layer. And it goes away and you can see anything that you're missing like that this change object layer. Okay. And then I'm gonna call this layer, this will be the next one I do, and this will be the layer, um, I'll call this owl chest. Slow click. Owl chest and right click change object layer changes it to blue and then I can turn that layer off and you can see I'm missing this part change object layer all right and I'm gonna join this beak back together make it a little easier so just draw a little box like that I got it all Join it together, call this one Owl Beak. And off. Then let's do the eyebrows. Join it back together. Browse, change object layer. And this one's white. I find that boring. So I'll bring up and we'll do lavender. Ah, oh, very nice, lavender. Okay, turn that off. And then we need to add more layers. So I click up here for new layer and I believe there's a plus sign down on the bottom here if you have a Mac to add a layer. And we'll do owl pupil.
change it to a different color here. Gold. Okay. Hide. And then you ask yourself whether or not you want this to be like a separate color. You maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you want that to be the same color as the body. That's up to you. But it might actually, uh, for our case scenario here, be kind of cool because I can make this like black or something like that. And it'll almost be like uh, uh, some punk rock eyeliner or something. So I'm going to make a this part right here, new layer, owl eye, change object layer, click here. Ooh, aquamarine. Okay, turn that off. And then this portion, I'm gonna put on another layer, why not? Call it I rim. Magenta. Okay. Hide. New layer. Owl beat. And I'm gonna kind of join some of this together right now so I can make it easier. Let's do turquoise. It might have actually been easier to do the feet, but uh, or, or do the talons first, but I don't. I'm already committed here. And of course, I'm just shifting to add to the selection the way you would in any other program. I might have gotten a little too carried away at the top here. Let's see. Okay, so then one more, call it Owl Talon. And I'll do orange. So it's nice and contrasted. Okay, join all this together here, and then I'm gonna turn that off, turn this one on. And it looks like these are parts of the talon as well. And I'll just change object layer again, move those over there. Otherwise it looks pretty decent. Then I'm gonna join all these parts back together. Turn that one off, turn this one back on. Since I just added to that, I'm gonna join that onto there too. Turn it off, turn this one on. And so I'm just joining everything back together so that it's all one piece again, because after you explode it, it's a bunch of different surfaces, and this will just make things cleaner, and I won't accidentally mess something up. Well, that's all one piece already, but just making sure here. Keep it clean. That's kind of the rule. The cleaner your geometry, the more versatile it will be.
Okay, and then I'll turn them all back on. And there we go. So now this is all set up for uh, materials. Okay, so materials is this tab right here, little paint tube. I believe it's just black and white on the Mac version, but it's there. Um, and you might have to uh, add materials to your library. So if you type the command Rhino materials, or what is it? Let's see. Is it? Is it download materials? I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> Ah, there you go, download library textures. So that's gonna be your command that'll add a bunch of materials to your, uh, to your database, if you will. I've already got them downloaded, so I don't need to do that. And then what we'll do, little plus sign here, um, and you've got your standard stuff, which you know, you've got gem, like if you wanted to make something look crystal, uh, or glass, transparent, or metal, like shiny. Um, you can do plastics and plasters. There are also more types that you can add um, from a uh, imported library that we just downloaded. So if you click on that and go to import, you'll see all of these libraries. So you can do wood and um, there's more organic stuff like fur. Um, a lot of stuff you can add here just uh, based on, on materials that you might want to do. Um, and I think I might do a couple of uh, different kinds and even make one of my own just to kind of show you what I can do with that. So let's start off with some basic ones. Um, I'm going to make the actual owl just a plastic. How about that? Something shiny uh, hasn't got a lot of parameters to play with. So plastic is a good one. So plastic and I'm going to switch over to ray traced here uh, just to give it the best possible kind of lighting and view. Well, yeah, I guess it's fine. So white plastic is default. If you come down here, you'll see the color picker and I can change that. And maybe I want to make my owl red. So I'll pick a red color. I can do it from over here or you know, standard color wheel stuff. And then by default, you've got a nice uh, glossiness on it uh, with the reflectivity here and not a lot of other details to, to play with here. You can, yes, you can add a bump texture and other stuff later, but we'll get into that more um, as we're as we're dealing with our custom material. So I'm going to assign that red and you can see it just goes to that layer. Um, and then so on. So I can add another material like gem is really cool um, and I'm in ray traced so you can you, you can actually see how the gem looks and I can pick like oh maybe I want uh, what kind of gem do I want right here where it says type I can change it from diamond to uh, ruby you know maybe i want to make the eyes ruby and it'll look kind of clear here unless it's rendered so if you if you're just in a regular rendered view or something it won't look quite like mine does oops i meant to do Control z or command z um boom I'm do some ruby eyes and you probably don't want to have yours in ray traced um i i am uh you know capable of doing that with my graphics card um, 3080 in full effect over here, but if you've got it in regular rendered view, it'll look kind of like this. And you can see that the gem doesn't look as good as it does on mine, but it will when you do the final render. So, okay. The whites of the eyes, maybe we just use kind of like a paint for that. So add another one. Um, I'll do a, a paint. And... Typically with eyes, I do not use just white. Um, I usually use like kind of a similar to brown, but like a like a really light sienna kind of brown. Like I like that like off white there. And then I'll put that there, and there, and maybe a little bit darker not too much more saturated. And you see it changes immediately, so I can kind of find that sweet spot. All right, and I'm gonna add another paint. In this paint, I'm gonna do really matte black for around the eyes. So I'll do another paint. This time, go really dark black. And 
changed the glossiness so it's super matte so it just doesn't have any reflection to it very gothic and i can also um click on that object since it's selected there if i right click i can go to assign to layers of objects and it'll it'll get both sides which is nice for like the eyebrows and stuff so now i've got a nice matte black around the eyes and then we'll do um the eyebrows what color should we make the eyebrows? I don't know. Um, hmm. Let's go maybe <laughs> play with something like fabric. I'm like, what is it called? And if you uh, change your view from list to icons, you can see uh, the different materials a little bit better. So I want something dark, maybe. A little bit generic, but mm, how about flower? Let's see. All right, we'll try that. So I've got that clicked, and if I right-click again, I can just assign to layers of objects. <laughs> and if that pattern is, is too funky, we can always change it. Actually, I, I hate that, so <laughs> let me go ahead and delete it. Yeah, and it removes it from there. Add another one. What about... Miscellaneous, what do we see in here? Let's see. Hmm. No. I think I'm gonna just go back to textile and do like a, just a standard black, dark brown, no. All right, yeah, so that looks a little bit better. Um, however, I think that I can make the pixels, uh, make the pattern more dense here. So this is gonna be the first example of showing you how to deal with the ref uh, repeating quality of it. So you've got the black fabric image file right here. If I click on that, it brings this up. Um, and I've got size, uh, offset, rotation. I can kind of play with those types of things. So let's go to... If I change that to a lower size, and sometimes it says repeat, it depends on the, the, the type of, uh, of material here. So if I change it to 0.5, you can see it's getting smaller and smaller. There we go, kind of like that. Okay, now the beak I feel like needs to be maybe um, gem again. So let's do another gem for the beak. And I think we'll do Ruby again. No, we already did Ruby. Let's do Sapphire. And so that's that blue, which when we get into the lighting a little bit more, it'll look a little bit better. So, okay. All right. And now um, let's do something cool with the feet. Maybe, um, maybe we'll do another fabric. Maybe even just re repeat this. And you can see I've kind of showed you a lot of what, we're, what we can deal with. Um, and then say like I wanted the, the pattern to be a little bit different here. I could actually duplicate this texture and change the uh, duplicate right there. And then change the, the weave like I had on the image there. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna do some sort of a gem for this toes. Actually, let's make the toes glow. So emissive colors are kind of cool because that's basically making it glow. Think of like LEDs or something like that. So if I wanted these to grow, glow like green, I could do that. Sign to layers of objects. And now you've got a little bit like a, this weird green glow to the, to the feet there. All right, and then I wanna do the chest. And the chest, I'm actually going to make my own material from scratch, which is uh, probably the most advanced thing you're gonna do, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So if I go to plus sign here, um, and I can go to custom, it just gives you a blank kind of canvas you can work with. Yes, I can just do the colors and the glossiness, the reflectivity. I can basically make any of these other materials based on my knowledge of the parameters of the object. but. Um, I'm going to actually click here and assign an image texture. And these are some of the textures and stuff that I've already made um, for other projects that, I, that, I, that I, I've been working on. This is actually for my house. <laughs> um, so I can use, for example, penny tile, or I like this kind of honeycomb pattern that I've got right here. Um, but I can also just use what's called a normal map, which uh, will give you um, just the texture of it. So these blue ones are normal maps. These whitish ones are kind of what we call bump maps. So if I open this in Photoshop, um, so open an image in Photoshop and always using images that are square. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second here. Um, because when we're talking about image textures, the easiest way to make sure that they repeat properly is to have, uh, a, have it be a perfect square. Okay, so if I look at the image size here, no, it's not a perfect square. <laughs> it should be 1024 by 1024 or, um, or 12, uh, 2048 if you double it. So it should be powers of two as well. So this is not exactly the right size, but if you look up image textures online, um, usually they're, they're perfectly square. So, 1024 um, by 1024 is a power of two, which is kind of confusing, but it, it's really important for game design and stuff like that to have your image textures be a power of two so that as you move away from them, it reduces the scale of them so that they don't take up so much memory. So that's the reason why we use squares uh, for materials. So if I go over here and uh, go to filter, probably most of you do not use many of the filters. Oh. It's blurred out. So 3D is the one I want. And when that's wrong, it's, it means that your mode here, I've got it in CMYK. We need it in RGB. So I just change that mode and then come over here to our filter again. And now it's available and I can go generate normal map. And we'll, we mostly use normal maps. And so now you can kind of see um, the, the actual texture of the object here. And it looks like it's backwards, right? So what I wanna do now is flip that. Um, invert height, there we go. So now the, that pattern is inverted. And that's how you kind of fake having a lot of texture because if you were to model all of that detail, it would be really, really expensive on your CPU and stuff and GPU. So, okay, looks good. File, save as. And I'm gonna just put it in the same folder here, but I'm gonna call it this. And instead of a bump map, I'm gonna call it normal. NM, that's what I use and save. Okay. Then we come back and I've got probably to come back in here to refresh it. There it is, open it up. Okay, so let's assign this to the object. Oh, and I put it in the wrong one. So that's why it looks funky there. Um, let's go over here to bump or normal, put it there instead. Okay. And I think actually blend, or not blender, um, Rhino likes to use bump maps instead. So let me just, 
change that to the bump map. So if I click on this, um, let's look to see if it says normal anywhere here. No, let's just go back. Click there to go out. And it looks right in the, in the, uh, there we go. Okay, for some reason it was black there. All right, now it's showing up. So you can see with it being white, it's got that kind of patterning to it that, that we want. Um, and let's go ahead and change the color too, because I don't have this set up here. Um, I can actually just come up here where it says color, and I can change that to maybe like a gray or orange even. You know, and it and it just changes the color of the uh, of of it without removing the texture. So very cool. All right, so let's do that. I think that looks good, and I can even have it glow if I wanted to. Emission is down here. Um, if you just change the emission color from black and kind of bump it up to white or whatever, it'll start to glow. But I don't want that. I'm gonna leave that black. All right, so that's our owl. Um, now the most important thing is to get it lit. And the way I like to uh, light objects instead of scenes is I like to imagine a studio where I'm creating um, studio lights. And you can see that by default under my render settings, I've got actually a, uh, a studio set up. You can look at it and you can see the two reflective boxes. It's in a completely white space. Um, there are a couple of really easy things we can do to make this work the way we want it to, but we can also really play with the render properties here. So I'm gonna go to render settings. I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff. Really at this point, you could kind of just render it out and call it a day. Um, so if I change this to 360 degree studio, make sure that you've got ground plane on, and this is the environmental lighting here. So if I now hit okay, you can see the studio in the background. So before it was just lit by the studio, now it actually is in a kind of studio setting where if I rotate, you can see there's lights and stuff. Um, but I don't really like that. I like having the, um, the lighting without the environment. And so let's go back to render properties here. And I'm going to go to uh, solid color because I'm going to change all of this later. And then um, ground plane, I can change the ground plane too if I wanted to change the material of it. See, it says uh, show shadows only. I can go to material here. Right now it's white. I can change the color of it uh, to whatever color I want. And then hit OK. And now the ground plane should change to that color. Um, but it's flat and I hate this really stark horizon line here. It's, it's not doing it for me. Um, and you can make the, the, uh, the, the ground plane a different material and stuff. But really what I like to do is actually make my entire environment. And it's not that complicated. So let's do this. Switch back over to shaded view here. And I'm going to go back to my layers. And I'm going to actually create a new layer and I'm going to call this studio. Then I'm gonna to go to a top view and I'm just going to draw a rectangle around our object. And go to a front view and we can see Owl here is, is kind of stuck on this plane right here where we wanna move him up basically. So I'm gonna go move, enter, find my snap point low to the ground as possible. There we go. And just move them straight. Uh, uh, I have grid snap on or something here. Let's see. Bo -bo 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 -no. There we go. Move them onto that box. Okay. Perspective. Move this over. And I actually want this to be a box that is curved up. You know, if you've, if you've ever done photography, there's oftentimes a muslin where there's a, like a, a real curved kind of uh, shape to the background. So it looks like an infinite background. If I were to just draw a box and it was like in a room, it would give all of those sharp angles that we don't want. So instead of a box, I'm actually going to use a sub D 
and I'm going to use a sub D box and I'll just draw it. Okay, and this sub D box that I did, if let me look at it again, we've got count five, five, five. I can change those, maybe even three, enter, three, enter, three, enter. And then you can see that curve is a little bit more dramatic in the back there. And with the sub D box, I can just uh, go to my faces and delete some. Delete the front, delete the front, delete the front, delete the front. Kind of like that, I think looks pretty good. So I've got light control basically. And then what I also want to do is grab these edges. I'm trying to really, really control the light. So if I double click on the edge there, there, gumball didn't come up. And then I can pull this. Let me pull it. Now it is. I don't know what that was about. Okay, so double click, just click this, double click it with the edge selection on. And then on the gumball, if I pull this like this, see, I'm just trying to create a void in here where no ambient light from the outside is getting in, but I can control how the light is hitting this object. I mean, you could even put it on a pedestal too. Like if I grab this object, oh, let me turn this off. Move, move. Okay. And then I'm gonna move this up 36 inches. Oops, that's right, I forgot it's small. About just six inches, okay. And then draw a box, six inches by six inches by six inches. Go to a top view, move it right. Over here, if your snaps are snapping too much, you might end up moving it the wrong way. Just disable your snaps. Okay. So that kind of gives me a pedestal that it's set on and, an, and a nice background. And if I switch it into ray traced here, you'll see it's kind of dark because we did a nice job of hiding the light. But look at our toes are glowing. Really cool, right? Okay. Um, so now you just add in the lights that you want to uh, illuminate your object and you think about what your background is. So maybe I even want to make my background black. So I select that back um, and go to materials and change object layer or assign to objects. You got a nice black background there. And you can see the lighting is really, really crucial for giving you that rendering. And I'm still getting that front little spot right there. And I might even close that front out. And then, um, so I'm only using the lighting that I'm in control of. Okay. So I've got kind of a good view here of the owl, how I want it. But I'm going to be making some moves and I want to be able to switch back and forth. So I'm going to set a view here. Go File. Uh, and I'm going to go to edit over here, uh, view, sorry, view, duh. set view, go to named views, and I'm going to click on the save as, and I'm going to call it owl render. So now, no matter what I do, if I rotate out of here, I can always double click on this and it goes back to the owl render. If I close this window, right click with the Mac, it'll, uh, It'll bring up this menu like we've talked about before. And under set view here, we now have owl render. So I'm going to change this back to a um, shaded view here so I can, I can jam, <laughs> move around really easily. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of, uh, of, of lights in here. And I'm going to use rectangle lights because I'm imagining this is a photo studio and I'd probably use like soft boxes or something like that. So um, go to a top view. And I'm in wireframe in the top view. 
and I'm gonna type rectangular light, boom. And I'm gonna put one here. And then I'm actually just gonna mirror this over. From this point, midpoint here. So I've got it nice and even. Okay. And then I'm gonna to go to a right view, zoom selected, Z enter, S enter. And we can see the direction of the light is going upward and it's flat. So move it up and I'm moving both of them because I've got them both selected and shift to turn my ortho off and kind of control that angle there. Oops. Okay, and if, yeah, if you're having issues with it, make sure ortho is disabled. Okay, so rectangular light, rectangular light, we got them both. Select light point, shift, light point. We want most of these light points. And I'm gonna kinda try to pull the light points for both of them right into our owl. So that that's where the light kind of fall off is happening. And I might even pull it like even a little bit through the owl. We'll see how it looks. You just, you know, you got to kind of experiment with these things. So there's that one and that one. Okay. So they're both going through. Cool. Now we go back to owl render through our view here. <laughs> so view owl render and then put it in ray trace mode or you just put it into render to be able to kind of see. Now you can kind of see how these, uh, how, how it's looking. And we want to kind of control the lighting a little bit more, maybe even move them further away, rotate it around so that these are not so harsh. Um, and you can do that through properties. And if I go back to my top view, the only way I can grab these is in the top view. Select both of them, switch back to owl render because you can see them in the, in the wireframe and I don't want to move out of this view. I just want to control things. So my intensity here, cool, whatever. But fall off is constant. This is kind of the easiest lighting. If I change this from constant to inverse squared, it immediately gets darker, but the quality of the light gets better. Um, I can change the intensity, bump it up a little bit more. Uh, shadow intensity, I can kind of soften the shadows. This is turning it more into like a soft box and then really increase the light. So you can play with the lighting through this quite a bit. To really get it how you want. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to a top view again and I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna put like a soft white sheet that just goes across the entire face of where these lights are. So I'm gonna move these back a little bit. Actually going to scale them out some. And then I'm gonna rotate this one. Oops. More towards it and a little bit. Grab this little part here and push it up, over. And I'm just trying to move this a little bit further away so that I can create this. And I'm gonna just delete this light. And I'll, I'll put it back in in a minute. Um, and then I'm gonna draw a straight line just from like maybe here all the way across to there using ortho shift to keep it straight. And then go back to our maybe our right view here, it's selected and extruded up. <laughs> and you can see it's blocking. So um, let's go back to the front view here. Click on this object, oh, top view I mean, top. Maybe I gotta move it back a little bit. And then I'm going to, um, Go to my materials here and add a new material. Oops, materials. 
add a new material and I'll do a custom one and I'm going to call it soft box transparency right here I'm going to go way up so this is just going to diffuse the light if I'm doing it right here. And you can see that one light is right there. I'm wondering if I add emission to it, if that will work. Yeah, there we go, assigned to objects. So now I'm just using the glow from that and I do have a light in there, but I can probably even delete that. So let's see what happens to this. Cause I want this to be kind of a moody glow. Yeah. All right, so playing with materials and lighting and all that's a lot of fun. Let's go back up to our render properties here. And solid color, ground plane. You want to make sure you've got kind of the same. I don't need skylight because I'm indoors. Um, resolution wise, I usually use a custom resolution. So I'll go to custom. And then I like to use 3000 by 1800. As just kind of a standard, if I wanted it to be better quality, I would do more. I use 300 DPI. Um, depending on your graphics processor or your computer, good quality is usually good. Draft, I, I, you could even use draft quality um, for your renders, but I'm going to use good quality for mine. Go OK. Didn't change the lighting much, but that will help impact the, uh, the render time here. All right, so let's go back up to our top view again and kind of keep playing with this. So top. And I'm gonna undo, bring this light back and go to a right view here and pull the size of this. I just wanna make it sure it's big and kind of like just play with that mirror to the other side so I've got the same lights two sides and I might even just kind of transparency let's select our lights again here Go back over to our properties. And I can bump the intensity up past the 100% here if I wanted to do 10. You can see, there we go. And then maybe I'll move these closer. There we go, now we're starting to get some really cool shapes going on here. Still got the glow. All right, I am getting close to being ready here. So next thing I'm gonna do um, will be the final thing and that's actually control the camera. So I'm getting a nice bokeh. 
I can change my lenses, all of that kind of stuff. So where that's done um, is under properties here, when nothing else is selected, you can see um, camera, you've got focal blur, uh, focal distance, f-stop, all of that is right there. Um, and then I can come up to view, set camera, and I can adjust lens length. So I can make this thing look really dramatic uh, by zooming out, clicking and dragging out will give me a wider angle lens. So now when I zoom back in, see the owl shape kind of deforms, right? Um, or I can, uh, and usually with product design, you want to use actually a, uh, a better, like a, a, almost more of a telephoto lens. So if you zoom back into the object and then zoom out, it gives you what's called compression. And that makes more of your object visible, less perspective, basically, with compression. Okay. And I'll zoom back out a little bit. Cool. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and now I'm ready to control kind of my manual settings for the camera. So I'm going to create some focal blur. And right now it's set to no focal blur, so it's super sharp. Um, and if I wanted to, I can change this to manual focus. And now you can see everything gets blurry. So now what I want to do is, is I want to select my focal distance. So I can do that by clicking on this right here and I'm going to draw a line from where I want things to be in focus. I want this part to be in focus to the tip of the nose and then enter. Okay, so that'll kind of blur the edges around the background and you see this, the, the back of the, uh, the pedestal now is kind of blurred as well. So that gives us that, that you know, DSLR camera kind of vibe to it too. All right, so the last couple of things, the black background I think is working, but maybe I want to actually change this to a different color so it's not so dead in the background. So let's go ahead and go to our materials. And it's set to paint right now. I can increase the glossiness and that might give us a little feeling of the volume, right? So now you can kind of see and as I really bump it up, it all it kind of becomes reflective and you can see the owl in the background and stuff there. And maybe I don't want it to be just black. Maybe I want it to be maybe even like let's dark green. Ooh. Oh, I guess I'm, I'm using that for the eyes too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm gonna cancel that. Duplicate, get a new material going here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and the final steps are your render settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to render properties here. Everything else is pretty well set up. I think I got a good size, I got a good quality, uh, background color, just make sure you're kind of copying what I've got here. If you do something like add a sunlight, it's gonna take a lot longer. Skylight's gonna take a lot longer to render. And since we're indoors, you don't need any of that stuff. Um, so just kind of copy my settings here. Um, technically you don't even need studio light.
But yeah, so that's fine. Okay. It doesn't really change anything. So it, it just makes your rendering times better. Um, and if you feel like you would like this to be portrait instead of landscape view, that might be another good touch. Um, so let's go to render properties again, and you can switch these. So make this 1800 and make this 3000. But with portrait, I actually like to use about 2000 and 3000. So it's a little bit square, more square, um, good quality. Okay. And then when it comes to rendering, first you want to do a render preview. And this will be a lower quality one and it'll show you how it's set up in the picture plane. And you can see you might have even wanted to go a little bit more square with the shape here because it's a little too rectangular. Okay. And it renders pretty quickly, quick samples. And then we go back to our render properties. I actually think I, I do like this one better landscape, but it's up to you. So 3000 by 3000 would give it a square, which might even be kind of cool. And then go to render preview. Yeah. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna actually switch it though, and um, I'm gonna put it back to a, a landscape view. Render properties. Okay, and now we'll do the long render. So this one's gonna take a bit of time. If you hopefully have everything set up, it shouldn't take, if it takes longer than an hour, you need to cancel it and do uh, uh, lower quality, either draft, draft quality will be fine for this, but uh, uh, higher quality means it traces it and, it and it observes the light more than it would otherwise. So um, I'm going to do mine and I'll show you the result at the end. And that's rendering with Rhino.